Discover connection, awaken sacredness, become empowered. Join us for our show on Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Discover Your Spiritual Gifts show number 79. We're your hosts, Dave and Violet. Our guest today is Kim Chesney, named as one of the leaders of Pittsburgh's Creative Revolution. Kim has been an innovative force in personal and cultural transformation for nearly two decades. Working in both the technology and culture sectors, Kim has led initiatives with some of the leading edge organizations, universities, and tech companies in the world creating new spaces for intuitive expression, including an art gallery, a creative business incubator, and hundreds of cross-sector events. She founded and produced the internationally acclaimed Create Festival for 10 years, which brought together thousands of game-changing artists and creative entrepreneurs from all around the U.S. each year. In 2018, Kim was elected to the Americans for the Arts Advisory Board for her outstanding achievements in the creative economy. In 2017, Kim started up Intuition Lab to teach a new and innovative approach to intuition. Her new book, Radical Intuition, A Revolutionary Guide to Using Your Inner Power, is the culmination of 20 years of research, exploration, and advocacy at the intersection of spirituality and cultural evolution. Well, welcome, Kim. Thank you for ah, being with us today. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> so we always like to ask people, uh, what is your background? How did you discover or develop your gifts? Did they start as a child? Did you have a mentor? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's a great question. And, you know, I think, like many people, I had throughout my life, a lot of intuitive experiences as a child. I lived in a haunted house. That was one of the, the fun stories <laughs> growing up. When, when things like that happen, you start to ask yourself how they're possible. So I think from a really young age, I had a curiosity and sort of a need to make sense of metaphysical things that I experienced in my own life. Oh, that's great. And, uh, well, are you still in the haunted house or is that long gone? <laughs> well, you know, there's a funny joke that people say that houses aren't haunted, but people are. So, <laughs> yeah, so I've had a few haunted houses. So, um, you know, but that's all been part of the journey and learning to understand, you know, what's really going on there. And, um, you know, it's, it, I think it's been meaningful for me uh, to explore these things. And part of my own purpose and mission is, is courageously going to those places, even though they can be a little you know, unknown and scary sometimes they're really mm. not we really understand you know what's really happening well they may not have been haunted houses it may just be that you recognize spirit and energy around you and all of us have that but we're just not connected as much right absolutely yeah and you know it runs in families so when you have you know multiple we have multiple females in our family with real intuitive energy and 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 those spiritual gifts uh things tend to sort of amplify a little bit so i think you're i think you're right about that <laughs> so so where where do your gifts fall your your personal gifts uh are you clairvoyant are you precognitive where 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 do your gifts fall yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, a, a little bit of a lot of those things, but uh, primarily, I see my background when I really started to learn about this stuff, I got in through mediumship and through spiritualism because I had a lot of physical uh, activity, obviously, starting with haunted houses. And um, so I have a lot of um, sort of the kind of energy that allows spirits to manifest in the physical world through, um, you know, through actual tangible events and things. So, so that's something that sort of has kept me plugged in, but I, I really have a natural intuition. I have, um, I'm an artist, so, and a writer. So the whole creative process, a creative intuitionist is, is really is key for my own career and everything else I do. So, you know, in, in radical wish, radical intuition, the book, we talk about the different types of intuition that really work, whether it's physical or emotional or mental or really mystical and, um, for me, I think that the key has been kind of delving into each of those and developing them because you because you can get better, as I'm sure you know, in certain areas. Well, I want to ask you, uh, since your your book is Radical Intuition, um, how do you define intuition for the listeners? Yeah, so you know, intu when I set <laughs> excuse me set to run out the, uh, to write the book, 
um, one of my intentions was really to help um, kind of set an uh, uh, um, everyday understanding of intuition. Because intuition people, you ask someone, oh, you know, what does intuition mean to you? And you'll get everything from like a gut feeling to, you know, creative knowing or a psychic experience. So it has so many elements. And I wanted to understand why. Like, why does um, intuition have so many uh, outlets that, that really ends up confusing people because we don't really know what it is. So I, I really went into that and I looked at the Jungian model of, of intuition really being this complement to the intellect that, that we infuse in so many aspects of our life, whether we're making decisions or whether we're um, trusting those feelings or whether even the physical, the way our body talks to us, you know, intuition is so important. And even ultimately our connection with God and the universe. So all of these different four pathways through our body, mind, heart, and spirit are ways that our intuition guides us. And what that is, our intuition really is that plug into that true source within us of knowledge and all knowingness. And one of the things I think early on that really changed the way I looked at things and changed the way a lot of uh, people that I work with, I have a school intuition lab and we work on developing it. And one of the first things I teach is this recognition that there is a part of you within yourself a part of you knows everything. So that simple sentence, if you take that and you honor it, you understand that, you know, whether you're pulling a, a, a tarot card and you always pull the right card, how do you know that? Because a part of you knows everything. A part of you, there's this higher self, call it what you will, God, the universe knows everything and has this ability to plug into things beyond space and time, things that might've happened in the past, things that are happening somewhere else. There's a part of us that knows that. So the trick with developing our intuition is learning to plug in and open up to that part of ourself. At least that's my, that's my impression. <laughs> well, one of the, the funny stories I heard long ago in a psychology class is um, somebody approached Freud one time and said, well, well, Dr. Freud, I, I have to make a choice uh, between two very good options. How do I decide which way to go? And he said, well, flip a coin. And the person said, flip a coin? That doesn't sound very logical coming from someone like you. And he goes, no, flip a coin and then see how you feel about the result. That will tell you which way to go. Uh, once again, following your intuition, your gut feeling, your, your knowingness. Exactly. And science has actually proved that we actually, despite what we think, we actually make decision, decisions based on how we feel. So we'll weigh out all the options. We'll do our pros and cons. But at the end of the day, we actually make that choice based on how that decision makes us feel. So so is there element of intuition that I think unconsciously is in everything we do, whether we realize we're working with our intuition or not? Well, that, that makes a lot of sense from a different area. You know, I, I've worked at a lot of uh, different places in my aerospace career, and I've I've worked with, uh, I've had my fair exposure to bad bosses. <laughs> and, and one thing about bad bosses is they're totally sincere, you know? Yeah. And so uh, you would have to say they're a prime example of not following logic because you can go in and you can say, if you choose A, the company will get additional business of a million dollars. If you choose B, the company has a risk of losing up to $50,000. Which way should we go? And the guy goes, well, I think we should go with B um, and not following logic, but he's following how he feels. And uh, even as he continues to uh, stumble and, and fall down the flight of stairs on these decisions. Yeah, intuition is so important with business. That's something that you know I, I focus on a lot because as you mentioned when we opened up is I, I work, I've had a career in tech and leadership. So intuition is such a valuable asset, not just for people who are innovating and creating and even like building businesses, but for leaders, it's so important a lot because of that feeling of empathy, right? So you want to have empathy for the people that you work with and understand, um, you know, what's going on on a deeper level. And intuition too is really tied into the ability to, you know, have that vision for the future. Literally, you have a vision, you have you know that you have to try something new and different or think outside the box. And that's really the secret sauce of real success. I mean, all these great companies out there that are, you know, Fortune 500 companies didn't get where they're at by doing what everybody else does or following everybody else. They followed that, that inner guidance, that spark within them that gave them that something special that was unique. And, and that really is intuition. Well, it's cool because more companies, I'm sorry, more companies are kind of stepping into that today, right? You know, for years and years, if you went into a, a corporate or with engineers and said, hey, I want you to follow your intuition, 
or your psychic abilities, they would have looked at you like you had 13 heads, right? <laughs> I love right? that you brought that up, right? Because that was literally my world because I was working in technology. I was working with these really big tech companies. And I'd also, my, in 2004, my first book, The Psychic Workshop came out. So I had this sort of secret life back then as in, in the <laughs> psychic world. But like you, a lot of people out there, you know, still out in the business world doing our thing. And so I'm sitting around with all these like, uh, you know, university professors and these like really people who are rock stars. And all of a sudden, we started talking about intuition. And, you know, I'm hearing these people talk about how important intuition is and how like, and and all of a sudden, like my mind's like, oh my gosh, like here I am in business and we're talking about intuition. And that was about 10 years ago, but that's when it really clicked to me that this is something that's, yes, it's for our, our personal growth and our spiritual development, but it's also something that's really important for our day-to-day life in the way that we live and build and grow the future. So it's, it, I, I personally think, you know, I talk about this idea with the intuition revolution, that intuition is going to be one of the key factors in the defining our future and the things that we end up doing with our technology and cultural project pro- progress. So it's really exciting to see what, you know, could lie ahead. Now, I also see the flip side of that. Um, you know, a lot of big companies are starting to flounder and, a common pattern I see with them is they become companies that are run by committee rather than one run by one person. And uh, they're getting away from using their intuition. You know, the, the common thing is, well, when the bean counters come and start sharpening their pencils, we're going to have layoffs. And it's like the bean counters don't necessarily have the vision yes. about how to move the company forward. They're looking for what are we going to do this quarter, you know, based on what we have in our business pipeline right now and they are not looking to the future and so you see big companies like GE that have just been uh, failing and uh, that's shocking too that headspace really that that is the death throes of a company is getting into that place of protection and and just focusing on money in the small picture and it's funny because it reminds me i was on a um, a board a, a strategic planning board and the ceo said we need to do everything we can this year to stay relevant and and those words just said that sums up how why a company fails yeah. you should never try to stay relevant what that mean what she's saying is we need to figure out what everybody else is doing follow what they're doing and, yeah. and try and stay relevant when the key should be, we need to define our unique purpose, our place that we can offer something that no one else can. How do we go within and figure out what this company has that's special and unique that will put us out ahead so other people follow us? That's how you get into the intuitive headspace and, and actually succeed and innovate. Mm-hmm. Oh, truer words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, good Good for you. Um yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the book. Uh, what do you have in this book? So so in, in writing Radical Intuition, I wanted to create sort of an everyday manual for intuition that was sort of less woo than a lot of the other work that I had done in the past. You know, my my own pathway has been very spiritual based, but I wanted to make the open that up and make it accessible for people who are just sort of starting to understand intuition and maybe bringing it into business or bringing it into their everyday life. But, you know, but, you know, as you know, intuition also has, it's a loaded word for a lot of people. Some people are afraid of it. Some people associate it, you know, with negative connotation just because of the conditioning of our society. So I really sort of wanted to write a book to help people really understand that intuition is this natural, innate thing that everybody has. And it's totally there for us. It's a natural part of our cognitive process. It's not something scary. It's not something to be afraid of. And then I really dug in and and tried to explain how it worked and give people opportunities to actually start using it. So that's one of my main focuses. I wanted people to go away from reading this book, actually being able to use their intuition. So there's a lot of practices, there's a lot of exercises, there's a lot of ways to engage in it. It's not just reading about it and learning about it. It's actually awakening your intuition and starting to use it in your life. Because really, whatever you do in your life, whatever it is, if you use your intuition, you'll do it better. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a short break here for a message from the store. We'll be right back with our guest. Hi, I'm Violet Rain, Master Teacher of the Akashic Records series of classes here 
at Discover Your Spiritual Gifts. If you've been interested in the Akashic Records, the Akashic Records are the life book or the etheric records of everything that we've ever thought, spoken, done, all of our contracts, relationships since we left Source. It is a valuable resource of information that people are able to tap into to get clarity, to get guidance, just to find out why things are the way they are in their life. The Akashic really helps us do that. This is a great series of classes if you're already getting intuitive information, meaning you're either getting visuals or you're hearing things or you just know things or you feel things. This is a great class to step into to amplify the information that you're receiving from a higher level of source versus just your intuition. If you'd like to find out more about my series of classes for the Akashic Records, please check out on our website under classes and look for Akashic Record Certification. I hope to see you in class or I hope to see you at the center here at Discover Your Spiritual Gifts. Have a great day and thanks for listening. Well, welcome back to Discover Your Spiritual Gifts. And our guest today is Kim Chesney, and we're talking about intuition, and I would even say radical intuition, just like her book. So uh, <laughs> we're going to continue on that. So how do you help businesses? Well, um, you know, when before I was wrote the book, I was uh, running a business incubator where I was helping creative startups. So um, creativity is really sort of what I call applied intuition. It's one of the few ways that we still foster intuition in our society. Um, you know, we do still teach art and creativity in school. We do still honor that. And it's becoming more and more important now. And even with technology and programming, this sort of creative intuition is something that's um, really leading the way. So I worked with like gaming companies, tech startups, all, all different kinds of people were doing cool stuff with their intuition and innovation. So I would help them to do all the kind of stuff that we're talking about here today, get into that place where they're using their intuition to lead and using their intuition to connect with other people and to build businesses. So it's really exciting. And, um, you know, I really feel like there's going to be a lot more opportunity in the world for people to express their creativity and intuition in business in the future. I love that. I love that. So I'm interested in your intuition lab that you have and hold. Talk to us a little bit about how that works and can anyone participate in that? Is that just in person or, you know, how do you offer that? Give us some insight because I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. How do you pick lab? I think that's also cool that you call it a lab. Yeah, so uh, that's a little bit of my tech background shining through there. I really like the idea of, you know, a lab because it's experimental. It's something that, um, so to answer your questions, Yes, it's open to everybody. It really, it's, um, you know, it started out, it started in 2017. And I really just wanted to bring a group of people together to start practicing these intuition exercises, uh, working together. Because one of the things that's great about intuition is with, when you're with a group of other people, it's really easy to practice, right? So you get better validation when you work with other people and you kind of get outside your headspace. So I really, I was inspired by my, you know, my own path of intuitive development years ago when I would um, be in intuition development circles and, but wanted to kind of uh, spin it into a more modern light and it's online, it's global. It, I've got students from all around the world and we get together and we have like quarterly classes, but we also have a one-year program where you just spend a full year like developing your intuition, getting guidance, giving guidance. And that's what's so exciting. It's magical when you do these things because not only do you have an opportunity to develop your intuition, but you have this opportunity to receive insight and, and intuition from other people. And when you start to see these things happen in those little magic moments where someone tells you something that you could never know, or you tell someone something that you could never know, you start to realize how powerful and real intuition is. And that's one of the biggest gifts I think that um, I and the students from Intuition Lab have received is this fact that you get to validate intuition in a way that is no longer undeniable. Because so often with our intuition, we're like, oh, it could have been a coincidence or this or that, and we can write it off. But when you have enough of these experiences, it really becomes strong and validated to you so that you feel really confident starting to use it and believe in it every day. I love that. I love that. Because I think, you know, when I talk to students and I'm sharing with them, 
everybody's getting messages. Whether they believe that or not, there's all kinds of stuff around us that's happening. We're just so busy and unaware of what, you know, and you're right, we discard it. Like, oh, that was just silly. That's that's not this or that's not that. And when you throw that away, when you really start noticing and aligning, your world expands and you really get some guidance. I call it our navigation system because yeah. I feel like, there's a power there that's navigating us to an easier road or pathway, but we're just headstrong. It's almost like when a parent says, you need to do this. And the child goes, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this every <laughs> year. And the parent's like, but this is easier. Why are you going to do it? Okay, go for it. <laughs> yes. now, trust yourself. It's one of those things. But the more you practice like that, the easier it is to start to trust yourself in those sort of counterintuitive situations because you, oh, I did this and it, and it came through for me in the past. Oh, so this must be the same feeling. I need to trust this. That's why it's so important to practice with your intuition and get those validations. So when you have to make those hard decisions or use that guidance system, you can do it confidently because you know what it is, right? Because part of the process is differentiating between what's intuition and what's our fears or our hopes or our wishes, right? So there's different voices in our head and we have to be crystal clear about which one is that true inner guidance. Yeah, I, I can see that because our fears or old belief systems that no longer serve us or yes. what we were told as children that we don't remember that that was given to us. It's not ours. We're actually taking on somebody else's. So sorting all that out and trusting that is pretty cool. So why did you call the book radical? Where, where did the word radical come from? Because I find that interesting. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking about with the publisher creating it, getting the right title for the book and, um, we, we both thought of this idea and loved it immediately when it came out, because, um, really the idea when you start to live by your intuition and truly make that choice, it is a radical decision and it, and it becomes a radical change in your life. Uh, you know, one of the sort of the quotes from the book that sum it all up was to be true to yourself is the most revolutionary act that little, I made a little meme of that and that went viral. That was like the thing from the book that went viral. It really resonated with people because it's that idea of shifting from, like you said earlier, all those things we were conditioned to believe, everything everybody else tells us, all of the things we think we're supposed to do with our life. When we stop living our life by that and we make that shift and start living our lives by our true voice, our inner guidance, our inner compass, then that changes our life. That completely changes our trajectory and, and everything that we do. So it becomes a radical shift from the outer to the inner. And that's sort of uh, what got the ball rolling. I love that. Well, it seems like a lot of our society today is, uh, and this really started happening during the, the Vietnam War, I think, in the 1960s, when, when people stopped being just uh, blindly obedient to authority and uh, the pendulum's gone back and forth quite a bit about, you know, um, well, you, if you're going to work at McDonald's, you need to pay attention and you, you know, for safety, for customer support and everything, you, you need to sort of follow the rules. You can't just walk in and say, well, I'm sorry, I'm just going to sit here and read magazines. You know, right. no, it doesn't work. Um, so, so people have to find that balance of how they're, they're using their, their independence and also their intuition. But uh, the flip side is a very healthy thing where a lot of people are finally you know, breaking out of the mold saying, you know, I just don't see myself working hourly work, you know, for other people in menial tasks for the next 40 or 50 years until I retire. I, that's just not in the cards for me. What can I do? And right now, I think they're kind of cast adrift. They don't know where to go with that feeling. Yeah. Your intuition is a great guidance system, though, to kind of guide you along the way of what's next for you. Because I think in worldwide, we're having major shifts, right? COVID changed our perspective on lots of things. And it's changed our world around, our school systems, our government, everything that we're looking at right now is changing. So it's all kind of moving. And so how can we move with this change? Because we're afraid of change. Um, and that's the reality. Most people get really comfortable in their life just like it is. But our world's changing around us. And guess what? We got to change with it. So how do we do that comfortably? And intuition's a great skill, tool, whatever you want to think of it as 
to help kind of guide you through that process. Absolutely. Because you know, what we really need to tune into are those inner callings, right? Those little things, those prompts inside us that move us and inspire us to do something. Like, you know, do you hear people talk about, oh, I don't know why I want to be a nurse. I just have this feeling it's for me. and I just want to do this. So it's those kind of things in those moments, whether we're making that career change or wanting something more for ourselves, or like having COVID come in and just shut things down and having to pivot going within and listening to that intuitive voice telling you where to take that next step is crucial because there's a little part of you again that knows everything that's there calling you say do this try that maybe go this direction and when we honor that as something real and not just as a passing whim it can really help guide us to grow because ultimately like you were just saying the universe is expanding and it wants us to expand with it so our intuition is that guide that helps us to keep expanding. We don't want to just sit here and die on the vine, right? We don't want to live working with Donald for the rest of our life if that's not something we love doing. Some people might love that, but if that's not for us, we don't want to do it. We want to keep growing and expanding with the universe and our intuition is help, there to help us do that. And I love that aspect. So Kim, talk to us about if people want to connect with you and work with you, what is the best way? What are some of the offerings? Because I like for people to be able to connect and know yeah what they can connect with you and do. So share that with us. Absolutely. So um, you can, first of all, you can get my free intuition, intuition awakening guide right now. If you want to just get started and practice some things, it's on my website, kimchesney.com. Um, that's a great way just to practice some of the little things we've talked about today, activate that intuitive energy and get moving. And if you're really interested in really developing your intuition and awakening and opening up to it, Intuition Lab my school, I offer year round self-study classes. And then every January we have a one year program that we start and a six week program that we start. So you can work with me and we can, and you can work with other people and, and really be part of a wonderful community of people who share this love and interest. And, and it's just really a lot of fun and there's some great people. So everyone's welcome. I love that. I love that. We'll have to get your book in our store. Uh, it's on my order yes. list. Uh, yes. so we have that because we have lots of people coming in looking for, you know, guidance because they're starting to open up and they don't know what to do or what that means. So I love being able to refer people. And if you're ever in Denver, we would love to have you come out and do a book signing or something at the center. So Keep well, I absolutely will do that. My new book uh, will be coming out next in 2024. So uh, I will, I will hook up with you guys for uh, some more that. fun. I think that would be great. What's your new book? Do you have any insights you can share? Uh, it's called The Illumination Code. And um, it's going to be an exploration of how intuition actually works uh, in terms of, I call it quantum thinking. And it's sort of uh, the thinking of a new era as opposed to old fashioned thinking, which was the cause and effect linear thinking of the old days. Now we're going to learn how to think uh, along the lines of all the discoveries that we understand in the quantum universe. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the research phase now and I'm really enjoying it. So sounds great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sounds really cool. I can't wait. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'd love to talk with you guys more when, when that comes out to you. Well, that'd be great. We'll put you on the list. I'd like to do another show with you. Excellent. All kinds of fun. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being with us today. Again, uh, the website is www.kimchesney.com. And a lot of great materials there and a lot of opportunities. So thank you again, Kim. Thanks so much. And uh, to our listeners, thank you for joining us today or whenever you download this. Uh, please stay with us for messages from several of our practitioners at DYSG. Uh, there are insights and opportunities there. Take care and have a great week. I'm Kate Thomason, a.k.a. The Joy Architect. And they call me The Joy Architect because I help people build lives based on their joy. I learned from a near soul death what it takes to make a life joyful because I realized that that was what was missing. And when I brought it all back in, I realized, aha, this is how it works. This is how you make life fun. You bring the soul in and now I have a method, a process by which people can have this relationship with themselves, their greater self very quickly and they find that foundation 
of fun in their life that they can use to build their life on. I'm a practitioner at Discover Your Spiritual Gifts, so they can look on the website under the practitioners there. Or you can find me at my website, KatherineBlakeThomason.com, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, Blake, B-L-A-K-E, Thomason, T-O-M-A-S-S-O-N.com. I am available by appointment seven days a week. I work at the center on Fridays from 10 to 5. Hi, my name is Christina Morris. I am the founder and president of Balance and Bliss Energy Healing. I'm a medical intuitive and high vibrational healer. I work in with the energy fields. Um, my scope of practice is energy medicine. Anything above and beyond that, you know, for outside care, we'll need to refer you out there. But I do use crystals and aromatherapy in my healings. And I help manage pain. We help move some of the pain out of the body that might be coming from stagnant energy within the field, as well as, you know, we get to the root of the problem with, you know, an emotional trauma and find out what's going on that could be causing more stagnant energy to be left in your aura, which in turn can cause illness and pain and a lot of other issues that we tend to see throughout our our day-to-day lives. And then I can be reached by appointment. You can make appointments anytime, any day of the week. I do work Monday through Friday in the evenings from about 5.30 to 8.30. Uh, your first session is can be about an hour and a half because we get to know one another. You know, we kind of go through what's going on. And then any session thereafter would run about 50 minutes to an hour. And I can be reached through my website at balanceandblissenergyhealing.com. My email is balance and bliss energy healing at gmail.com and I can also be reached via phone or text at 720-696-0286 and I look forward to any you know potential clients if you have any referrals or if uh, you are in need of any of my services I look forward to working with you I am Lisa Laney two-time international best-selling author teacher intuitive artist reader and healer at Discover Your Spiritual Gifts. I am a very creative, artistic person who has been an intuitive empath my whole life. As a child, I was always aware of energy. I could detect shifts as people entered the room, which I thought all people could do. I didn't realize I was an empath until much later in life. I have studied various modalities, attended several retreats to peel back layers of childhood experiences to create a toolbox I use to navigate this world with intention. I am now pairing my intuitive gifts with my creativity to live an intentional life and empower other women to shine their brightest light, to manifest an abundant life with creativity and intention. If this resonates with you, join me at Discover Your Spiritual Gifts the first Thursday of each month at 6.30 at my Women's Intention Play Shop. The focus of each class varies on a different intention to heal, inspire, and empower each of you with a simple art project. In this class, we set the intention into what you create, so when you bring it home, you are reminded of what you are manifesting or releasing each time you look at it. This keeps the energy moving, which helps you create a more empowered version of yourself. If you prefer one-on-one time, I offer intuitive tree readings. You simply draw me a tree any way you feel guided. Coupled with your intention, we edit the tree so you have a visual of how you want to create a life of joyous empowerment. If this is calling you, I can be reached at 720-257-9441 or at lisaelaney.com. Tap into your inner magic to create an amazing toolbox of your own by joining me, Lisa Elaney, at Discover Your Spiritual Gift. Discover Connection Awaken Sacredness Join us for our show on Blog Talk Radio.